Hello. I thought it might be fun to show you that there's in this unit circle that we drew in a previous video, we created a, a six sided shape or a hexagon around a smaller hexagon in the center of our sacred geometric shape. And then we went through this whole process of creating the unit circle and deriving degrees and radians, blah, blah, blah. But I failed to point out that the hexagon can itself become a cube. Um, you may be seeing it now, or perhaps not. So let me let me draw a cube from this shape, and this this becomes a a platonic uh, solid, uh, a cube. It all it's just a it's a visual perception thing. If I highlight certain lines and don't highlight others, um, a cube will emerge from our trigonometric circle, our clock, our flower of life, however, whatever metaphor or analogy you want to use. Um, I just want to show that out of a hexagon, you can get a cube. A perfect cube and I just think it's it's neat and in life in school I think that you know Rousseau would agree and uh, Pythagoras may have may agree and certainly Plato or Socrates his teacher would certainly have agreed that fun and games and interesting pretty shapes can inspire people much more than boring formulas. So uh, I just want to show that, you know, watch that other video on how we got here. If you want to see how to, how to create all the necessary components, but you're probably seeing the cube emerging. The cube is a set of six squares, essentially, so in three dimensions, six squares in three dimensions. All kinds of fun stuff can be derived from sacred geometry. This is just one of a nearly endless series of amazing shapes and harmonies and visual patterns the correspondence between the, the to jump from what we have in front of us to music is not hard uh, and that might seem like a leap but uh, hopefully we'll get there so now what <clears throat> I have the basics of the cube but if I want to make it uber ultra clear I can kind of erase a little bit of this stuff in the middle and shade in a bit and you'll see the cube has been sitting there the whole time see the cube let me do a bit of terrible shading because I'm not good at this. I'm not an artist. I'm not a mathematician and I'm not an artist, yet I'm doing, I'm trying to make art out of math. Go figure. But I think it's neat that a 
you know, the the hexagon in 3D becomes a cube. That's that's really cool. I'll just shade it in a bit. You can speed this video up if you're bored. I might be bored if I was watching someone shade slowly. But maybe not. can't shade at all and I certainly can't shade a 3d shape very well but I will try this would be a fun activity for kids to do I think to shade in the shape. Imagine doing this in a trig class or a pre-cal class. You would never imagine having so much fun in pre-cal. Like, hey, welcome to pre-cal. I want you to draw. Um, I want you to get some colored pencils out and draw. I love how if, if you shade very lightly, the erased the erased uh, flower is still kind of showing through. It kind of gives it a neat effect. Again, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to create some dynamic contrast of light and dark. I'm sure artists the world over are cringing as I draw. But make your own video. Okay. And now we'll do uh, this side. I'm trying to go a bit faster. <clears throat> It's not like this is headed to the Guggenheim or the Met or the Whitney anytime soon. And that's principally because it's far too beautiful to appear in any of those junkyard museums. Um, I guess the Met has many nice pieces. How about the, the Museum of Modern Art? MoMA would never put this in there because it's too beautiful. And that may give you some hint as to how I feel about it. modern aesthetic theory. I can't stress this enough. Um, a person's own experiences are, are never informative to other people. Maybe they are. I don't know. But we all have our own stories. Mine is that I was tortured and trig and calculus in college, finite math. And the whole time I kept thinking, how do some people find this entertaining or enjoyable? Well, as an adult and a teacher, 
more the former than the latter. I, I, I can't. I have to find ways of doing things that I can learn something and satisfy my own need to not be bored. Because it's no fun to just be bored. I've heard it explained by many people that math is so beautiful. And this is one way that we can see a bit of beauty in math. Some of the beauty. Math is just full of this stuff. But we don't often highlight it. Like, can you... If you're over a certain age and you're not taking trigonometry right now or you took it at some point in the past, did anybody ever do this with you? Did anybody ever show this to you? Because they sure, certainly didn't show it to me. Um, <clears throat> or let me draw it. It was just, let me torture you by making you memorize this, uh, this unit circle. Uh, <clears throat> one more side will get us our cube. And the anxiety of watching a Terrible artist shade a picture using a Crayola colored pencil uh, will be over. The torture will come to an end shortly. You know, there's a a new trend in adult coloring books. And it's easy to, to think about the infantilism of the millennial hipster generation of coffee shop dwellers, you know, of which I'm a member. Okay, I'm 31. So that's, and I've spent a fair amount of time looking cool in a coffee shop. Um, I, I never did get into the adult coloring book thing. But I kind of get it now. I'm starting to understand, like, why would somebody? Uh, I guess I would just want to redirect. That's a teacher term that is needlessly complicated. But uh, like most teacher terms are needlessly complicated, redirect. I would redirect the student from wasting time with adult coloring books and instead creating sacred geometry which is beautiful and can be far more instructive than just an adult coloring book. I feel like this is an adult coloring book right here, only it can teach us time, math, music, the Great Pyramid, etc., depending on what your various predilections are as it relates to sacred geometry. Seems like this field attracts everything from cranks to genius mathematicians like Roger Penrose. But, you know, the cube is huge in, <clears throat> in mythology and, and all kinds of esoteric fields. The cube is very important. So... Here is our here is our cube. Just color in a few points for the photo finish. You know, I know some students who would never, never do math. They would avoid it at all costs. And yet, they'll do this. They'll do this, and they'll like it. <clears throat> they will enjoy it. Just the fun of drawing.
and uh, and I enjoy it, even though I don't like to draw. I'm not good at it. I enjoy drawing this. It's kind of like how Richard Feynman described enjoying a rose, enjoying the beauty of a rose. Somebody said to Richard Feynman, a famous Nobel Prize winning physicist, one time uh, found one of the inventors or discoverers of quantum electrodynamics and the sum over histories method whatever that means, like I'm saying it like I know what I'm talking about. Um, they asked him one time in an interview, doesn't your uh, knowledge of physics and kind of take away from the physical beauty of the world around you? And he says, quite the contrary. Like when he looks at a rose, he's thinking of all of the physics of the rose in addition to the, um, the simple aesthetic beauty of it. And he said, quite, quite apart from detracting from the uh, aesthetic beauty, a knowledge of physics and the math and mathematics and the quantum. He, he can see the rose in, in, in many aspects in which normal people can't see the rose. You know, I imagine a, a zoologist would look the same way at animals. And I like to think that a math, mathematicians um, look the same way at, at, at math. So, Hopefully this gives you some kind of um, some kind of visual uh, experience that's harmonious. I, I think it's very pretty, and it's not because I'm an artist. It's because the underlying image is itself beautiful. And uh, that will conclude. That will conclude. We'll stop there. Very, very nice. Pretty. I like it. Thank you.